he has been dubbed the most dangerous man in Scotland. But this title barely scratches the surface of how dangerous this man really is. Stay tuned to find out about the life and crimes of James Jasper McCann. Welcome back to Crime Chronicles. Today we take a look at a Scottish thug who has become infamous for his acts of ultra-violence. James Jasper McCann is originally from the tough east end of Glasgow. In his teenage years, he started to forge a reputation for extreme violence, tearing up the streets of Glasgow's east end with other young gang members. From a young age, McCann's weapon of choice was a knife and others knew he was more than willing to use it. He did time in a young offender's institution for serious assault, but he was still out in under two years and began to attract attention from older members of the organized crime community. Gang bosses started to realize that McCann was someone who would get things done, regardless of how much violence was required. Senior gang figures knew that McCann was willing to do any of their dirty work, threatening violence in and around the east end of Glasgow to collect drug debts for himself or on behalf of anyone who would use his services. McCann had very little loyalty when it came to who he would work for. He was all about the money and would usually sell his services to the highest bidder. His ultimate loyalty was to himself, but over time he has been linked to the Daniel family and the Edinburgh-based gangster Robert Kelby more than any other group or individual. McCann was a hired enforcer, brought in for protection during a dangerous feud between Kelby and Edinburgh-based drug kingpin Mark Richardson, a feud that resulted in Kelby being shot. Although McCann was well known to the police and court system by his early 20s, it was in 1996 that he faced his first proper stretch in jail for an unprovoked knife attack while on a night out in Edinburgh in 1994. The judge was told by McCann's defence that he preferred to socialise in Edinburgh as he felt it was safer than the streets of Glasgow where he himself had been the victim of violence. But as we know, he was the one making the streets of Glasgow more dangerous. McCann was sentenced to seven years in prison for the attack, which left the innocent victim, Stephen Walker, with permanent facial disfigurement. McCann was sent to Shots Prison in Lanarkshire to serve his sentence. During his time in Shots Prison, McCann would allegedly attempt to murder underworld supergrass Tam Baggin after word had got around that Baggin was passing information to the serious crime squad about other gangland figures. And as you can guess, they were not happy. It's been reported that McCann had been hired to kill Baggin, so he stabbed him three times in the back in the prison workshop, leaving him lying in a pool of blood. Although the attack saw him get rushed to hospital, the attempt on Baggin's life failed. In a true gangland tradition, he never identified his attacker to the police. Around six weeks after the Baggins stabbing, McCann would almost lose his life in a revenge hit while still in prison. This revenge attack was carried out by notorious Burgersley Park hard man, Paul Sheehan. The attack was very similar to Baggins, with McCann being attacked from behind and brutally stabbed in the back. McCann was rushed to hospital, where he nearly bled to death, but doctors managed to save his life. Paul Sheehan would lose his life in a violent fashion a few years later. In 2002, after his release from prison, he was stabbed 22 times by the jealous ex-lover of his new partner in her Fergusley Park flat. After being released from prison, McCann would drift back into his life of crime, and it wouldn't be long before he was at the centre of another ultra-violent attack. In August of 2006, George Goofy Doherty, an associate of the Lions crime family, was brutally attacked and killed in broad daylight on the streets of Glasgow. He was set upon by a knife-wielding hitman who jumped out of a car that pulled up beside him. Doherty was wearing a stab-proof vest 
so the knifeman repeatedly stabbed him in the legs and groin during this horrific attack. Once he was down, the driver ran over him with the car, then reversed back over him again. And to make sure he was dead, the driver ran over him a third time. There was a long list of enemies that would have lined up to kill Doherty for the things he'd done over the years. But who actually ordered the hit? As this was a knife attack, it made sense that McCann was pulled in and questioned, but the police were unable to link him to the murder. The police failed to charge anyone for Doherty's murder, and it remains unsolved to this day. A few months later, in November 2006, McCann was caught with a machine gun, a silencer, and a revolver, as well as several rounds of ammunition. These items were found at addresses linked to him. He was charged with possession of illegal weapons and ammunition and jailed for seven years. McCann was back out on the streets in late 2011 and was quickly hired as an enforcer for Robert Kelby in his ongoing feud with Edinburgh drug kingpin Mark Richardson. McCann was out for revenge for Kelby's 2010 shooting. With Mark Richardson stuck in jail, McCann went to a garage called AGS Autos, which was run by Richardson's then-girlfriend's father, Stephen Dignan. McCann was approached on the forecourt of the garage by Dignan's business partner, Gordon Archibald. They exchanged words, and then, in a frenzied attack, McCann slashed Archibald across the face and stabbed him in the stomach. It seems like McCann got the wrong man, as Dignan would have been the most likely target. But ultimately, the attack was designed to send a message to Mark Richardson. A witness during the trial described Archibald's catastrophic injuries as he stumbled into the waiting area of the garage. She said the part of his face that had been slashed was hanging down, touching his shoulder, and he was cut from his ear to his mouth. He was bleeding profusely, so the woman helped him to her car and drove him to the hospital. The craziest part of this incident is that McCann walked free from the High Court in Edinburgh for this attack, as Gordon Archibald was too terrified to take the stand. The case against McCann relied on Archibald's testimony but he was petrified of McCann, which led to the collapse of the case as it was getting underway. Another incident proves just how ruthless and callous McCann really is. In 2014, he is alleged to have attacked his own cousin in a brutal knife attack. McCann's cousin, heroin smuggling kingpin David Santini, is infamous for a 1.1 million pound heroin bust that got him 11 years in prison. The cousins had fallen out over money, so McCann and an associate paid Santini a visit at his luxury home, where it is alleged that McCann viciously slashed Santini across the face, leaving an eight inch gash. Once again, McCann was charged for this attack, but managed to walk free because Santini refused to identify his attacker. McCann must have quite the stack of of get-out-of-jail-free cards. A few years after the alleged assault on Santini, McCann would finally end up back in jail, this time for a prolonged attack and torture of a man named Paul Connor. The attack, carried out by McCann, his brother Robert, and an associate, Greg Bannerman, took place at two different flats, one in Glasgow, and the other in Airdrie. The men were trying to extort money that Connor had received as compensation for a car accident. During the attack, he was choked and punched before being repeatedly hit with a claw hammer. McCann told him he was going to kill him and dispose of his body. He was then told he was going to be injected with pure heroin, so his death looked like an overdose. The torture lasted for many hours, and only ended when Paul Connor, in a final act of desperation, managed to throw himself out of a first floor window. 
he was able to flee and find help. In 2019, McCann, his brother, and Bannerman received sentences ranging from five to nine years for their part in the prolonged torture of Paul Connor. Although James McCann, once called the most dangerous man in Scotland, is currently locked up, it won't be many years before he is free again. When he's released, will he return to his violent ways, or will he finally lead a law-abiding life? Let us know what you think in the comments. Thank you for joining us again on Crime Chronicles. If you liked today's story, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends.